talk is, is concerning uh, control of free bounded problems. Specifically, uh, I will talk about control results for one and two phase Stefan problems. So uh, the talk is uh, raised in a joint work with uh, Raul Casa Araujo, who was a, PhD, a former PhD student of, of Enrique Fernandez Cara and mine. Enrique Fernandez Cara is another author, and Juan Limaco Ferrer is, uh, is also one of the authors of this, this uh, work. Okay, so my talk is divided in three parts. I will start with an introduction, and then I will present my main work, main result, and then uh, its proof. Uh, and then I will finish with some additional comments and, and remarks. Oh. Uh, so uh, just to, uh, to say some, some words about control theory. So um, he's a, um, a general control system. Okay, which is a dynamical system in which here you see uh, Y, uh, which is the state uh, of this dynamical system. And you have a new variable there, uh, U, and this new variable U is a command, a control that you can choose freely in such a way uh, this is, the system behaves in appropriate way uh, in accord with our wishes. Okay, so when you have a control system, when we have a dynamical system with a state and an additional variable control, the goal is uh, to find uh, a command, a control, such that the solution of, of this dynamical system behaves in a, in a suitable manner at, at the final time. So, uh, Below here, you see uh, uh, some um, controllability properties uh, related to this control problem. Uh, we are talking about um, SI controllability at time t. If you can, through the command u, you can steer your solution of this dynamical system from any initial data to any final data. When this this happens, so we are talking about exact controllability. And two particular cases of exact controllability are new controllability at time t when the target, when this uh, final desired state is, is zero, and exact controllability to trajectory when this uh, desired state, this target, is the final data of a particular solution of this system. And we are talking about approximate controllability at time t when we, we steer our, our solution from any initial data, you not to any neighborhood of the target with respect to some topology of, of the, the space S, which is the space of initial conditions. Okay, so these are uh, some qualitative uh, properties of controllability. So uh, mm, it's, 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 not, it's no uh, that these, uh, these controllability properties are equivalent to some, to some quantitative properties. So uh, how to quantify this qualitative property? We one can use uh, what what is known as the duality between controllability and observability, which is um, a classical argument uh, where one can find here in this uh, Sycom paper seven seventy uh, seven uh, of Dolecki and Russell. And the idea is, uh, is written here. Um, I will explain uh, uh, now. 
So let us suppose that uh, our dynamic system has this linear form. So now we have an operator A, and then we have an operator B, and B says how the control act, act in the system. Okay, and A could be um, um, differential operator, an integral operator, uh, matrix, um, whatever. So with the solution of this, this control system, we define two functionals. Uh, we define two operators. Uh, one we call F, which is defined for initial condition uh, zero and the, fun the, the operator G, which is defined for control equal to zero. So, and they are defined in, this, in the following way. So F associated to any control, the, solu the associate solution with zero initial condition uh, at time T. And G associate any initial condition uh, to uh, the solution of a, a, a control system with control equal to zero at, at time t. And then one can compute uh, the adjoint of these two operators. And you see that the adjoint is given by, by this expression, where z, z is the solution of this adjoint, uh, adjoint system, okay? which is the adjunct system of, of this control system. Okay, so uh, this qualitative property is a controllability. If you see is equivalent, is equivalent to the surjectivity of this operator, this linear operator F. And it's well known uh, from functional analysis that this linear, bounded operator F is onto if on if its adjoint satisfy this inequality. It's more than, is more than in injective. Okay, so, uh, and this inequality is known in quantum theory as the strong observability inequality. And, and the approximate controllability is equivalent to uh, to the property that the, the, the image of F is dense in the space of S, in the space S. And this is equivalent to, to, uh, to that, that uh, the adjoint is, uh, the kernel of the adjoint is, is, is new. Okay, and this property is known as the unit continuation property for the adjoint system, which is a property which is equivalent to approximate controllability. And the side controllability to trajectory is uh, associated to this inclusion of the, the relation between the, the image of G and F. And this is not uh, well known uh, in functional analysis, but uh, this can, can be proven that uh, this uh, property of, of the image is uh, equivalent to these uh, two properties for, for the, the adjoints of F and, and G. And this is known as the weak observability inequality. Okay, so here we, uh, we have that all these um, qualitative properties are now equivalent to some quantitative properties for, for some, for some uh, system. Okay, so just to uh, show an example, here we have the heat equation. Uh, the heat equation here is the control. The control is a source that is acting in a small portion of our domain, omega. And, uh, and the first thing that one observes is that the solution outside, outside uh, O is, uh, is very regular because of the regularized effect of the heat equation. So you never, View control acting in a small portion of your domain and initial data, why not to another, in, another target in L2. So the exact controllability does not hold. 
What we know is that the new controllability holds for, for this heat equation. And the, it is formulated here. And this is equivalent uh, to this observability inequality. So if we prove this observability inequality, we prove that your, your, your heat equation is controlled to C. And this result was uh, done by Russell in this SICOM paper using moment method, but this result uh, works only on, two, uh, on 1D. And then after um, almost 20 years, uh, we have this result by Lebo Robiano and Fusikov Manovilov in which they extend uh, this result to uh, any dimensional case. Um, using different uh, different strategies, okay. So uh, let's talk about uh, free bounded problems. So free bounded problems arise in uh, in many uh, mathematical models where where there is an extra effect of the median, and this effect of the median. Is, um, is, is a qualitative, is in general, a qualitative chain of the median. And, and, and in this case, sometimes appear uh, what, what one call a phase transition. For instance, uh, when you, uh, when the, this appear, for instance, when we pass from ice to water, from liquid to crystal, et cetera, et cetera. So a free bounded problem is one can define as a differential system in which we have as a nose the function, the solution of your problem, but also a domain or a part of the domain. And here we have some reference, a classical reference of free bounded problem, Luis Caffarelli, and Figali, Crank, uh, Friedman. Uh, th these are two papers more related to regularity, and this is more related to existence of, of solution. Uh, so here we have some pictures to illustrate uh, uh, where um, this phenomena um, appears. And, and about the Stefan problems, uh, then the main name is Stefan, which is a physicist and mathematician. And uh, this uh, Stefan, uh, this guy is uh, well known for in the radioactivity because there is some uh, law um, stated by him. And also he um, performed some, some contribution uh, in this kind of free bound problem. Specifically, uh, in, uh, he formulates some equation, what we know uh, now uh, as one and two phase uh, Stefan problem, in which uh, he was interested to understand uh, the freezing of, of the ground and the formation of, of the ice in the sea, in, in the ocean. Uh, so um, here I, uh, we have uh, the Stefan problem, the one, one phase Stefan problem. We have a PD, a heat equation here. And uh, the heat equation is posted in this domain. Here now you see the domain is not, it's not fixed. So, uh, and we have a boundary condition. And also you have this additional, a law, which is called a Stefan condition, okay, which says how how the the, the free boundary uh, evolves, and uh, this relation says this is Stefan condition says that uh, the heat flux through the free boundary is proportional to the velocity of the free bound free boundary, okay. So um, the question that we are interested in is uh, if it's possible or not to control this, this system, this kind of free bundle problem. Here you have 
U and L are unknowns here. So the domain is an unknown. It's a non-cylindrical unknown domain. Okay, so uh, here I just we uh, I introduced the control. So here we have a control that is acting in our free bounded problem. And our control, we, we have um, uh, a domain. Okay, QL is this non-cylindrical domain. And the control act in, in a cylindrical uh, part of, of this uh, space-time domain. And we want to steer the solution of, of this problem, the solution and the interface to, uh, to uh, some target. So here are some previous works uh, by Fasano in Primecerio, Enrique Fernandez Cara and Juan Limo and Silvano Menezes uh, prove uh, the first result of um, controllability for one phase Stefan problem. And uh, here they only control the, the temperature, the solution. And our contribution uh, in comparison with that is that we control both the temperature and the interface in the, the free boundary, we control both. And uh, there is also a contribution by uh, Koga, Diagne and Tristic in which they prove uh, an stabilization uh, result. They stabilize temperature and, and the interface for this problem. Okay, so this is our result. Um, we assume that the initial condition is regular and this is small in this sense. And then we can prove that there exists a control H such that the solution of our free boundary problem, a one phase free boundary problem, is controlled to, to this target LT. The interface is controlled to LT and the solution is controlled to C. So uh, the strategy is uh, first reformulate the problem, uh, perform some change of variable in order to, to lead to a cylindrical domain. So uh, we introduce a different morphism that uh, maps the non-cylindrical domain in a cylindrical domain, which is here, related to the initial condition of the free bounder uh, of the free boundary. And uh, it's a suitable uh, diffeomorphism, um, which preserve some, preserve for instance, the region where the control is acting, the region where the control is acting, do not move, remains uh, cylindrical. Okay, and then we introduce new variables, uh, P uh, through this um, diffeomorphism. So what we have now is a cylindrical domain, a cylindrical PDE, in which uh, the nonlinearity is here on the boundary, on, on, the, on the coefficients of, of the equation. So we have to control this problem now. Uh, so the controllability of this, uh, the, the, the free boundary problem is equivalent to the controllability of this parabolic system in cylindrical domain. So uh, our task is we just have to prove this, this result. So the proof is that it's divided in three steps. We first prove approximate controllability for our linearized system. And then we prove uh, through a um, uh, fixed point argument, local approximate exact controllability for these uh, uh, nonlinear uh, parabolic system in a cylindrical domain. And then we pass the limit uh, in order to obtain the new controllability. So uh, we linearize, so we take um, L, L hat, and then we plug this L hat in the coefficients. So now we have a um, linear operator, and then we have this FB lean, the linearize L naught because we are in the cylindrical domain. And then we, we need to control this 
uh, this linear system. And then we have, uh, we associate it to this L hat, we associate P, and with this P, we associate um, cursive L. Okay. So um, this will define a fixed point uh, mapping. Okay. So we need to control this and we need to control this as well. So the aim is to prove that, is to prove an approximate controllability result uh, subject to some linear constraint. So we, we need to prove that the solution of that linearized system is, is as small as we want at the final time. And also that this condition happen because uh, L of capital T, uh, cursive L of capital T is equal to this, and this should be equal to a small l t. Okay, and this is a constraint on the state. And then we reformulate this constraint on the state, linear constraint on the state. We reformulate this linear constraint on the state as a linear constraint on the controls. And then we uh, introduce some uh, augmented uh, solution from an adjoint, suitable adjoint problem. And then this, uh, this uh, linear constraint is equivalent to this, another linear constraint on the controls. So the task now is prove uh, this condition, AC, and prove that the controls that control uh, P satisfies that, okay? Uh, and first, first, when, uh, use, um, we need to prove this observability inequality. Here is not, uh, is different of the observability inequality that I show at the beginning for the heat equation, because for the heat equation, we do not have this projection. Okay, this is a projector associated to uh, the augmented solution side that I introduced before. And this, uh, Project operator is a fine rank, uh, rank operator. So it is compact. So using a compact and uniqueness argument, you can, uh, from the observability inequality, you can deduce uh, this improved observability inequality. Okay, there is some technicalities, but uh, uh, it's true. Okay, so uh, with that, we introduce uh, this functional, okay, G L hat epsilon, which is given by that. And when you compute uh, this, the, the Gato derivative of this functional, you have exactly that. And, uh, and what, and, and you, you observe, you observe that uh, if, if you decompose your control in two parts, uh, you have one part here and this uh, part, you see that uh, this part we give we give uh, the constraint, the linear constraint on the controls. As soon as, if 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 only if the first part of of the control is. Uh, is orthogonal, is orthogonal to that, okay? So uh, this part of the control is, uh, uh, leads to, to this linear constraint, okay? Uh, if you perform the computation, you see that. And this part of the control, we give, you, you give you, uh, gives you uh, exactly uh, the approximate controllability, okay? And this is done. And also you are uh, using uh, the operator and the observability inequality, you can prove that the controls are uniformly bounded with respect to website, okay? So in order to finish that, uh, we have uh, the local approximate uh, controllability for, for this PD, uh, parabolic system, nonlinear parabolic system, and the cylindrical domain, which is stated here. Okay, and the idea here is perform a shoulder fixed point. Okay, 
and um, why why we in order to why we didn't prove directly a new controllable result because if we try to prove directly the new controllable result uh, we don't know how to prove the continuity of the shoulder uh, uh, the fixed point mapping so in order to ensure the continuity of of the fixed point mapping we need to uh, uh, formulate an approximate controllability result okay and the capacity uh, comes from the regularity of the initial condition that's why we assume that the initial condition is uh, have, is in a w14 uh, and uh, the mapping uh, map uh, abundance set into itself because of the is, is smallness or of the initial condition. And then uh, the last step of the proof is this one. Uh, since uh, the controls are bounded uniform respect to epsilon, so we have that uh, L epsilon is uniform bounded respect to epsilon in this, uh, in this set, in this space, and H is also bounded uniform to epsilon in this space, so we can pass to the limit. You have uh, some regularity, which implies strong convergence of the solution. And then you can verify uh, the new controllability condition. Okay. And using, uh, and using that, and using also the strong convergence in C1, you can prove that uh, the interface, the limit of the interface epsilons uh satisfy the Stefan condition okay and this uh, ends the proof of of our main theorem okay just to finish the conclusions um we uh, formulate a um distributed control problem so using an essential domain argument you can uh, prove uh, boundary controllability okay in in the side where uh in the fixed side, okay, uh, the control can act in the other side, not, not on the, the free boundary, the other side, which is fixed. And also you can assume less regularity for the initial condition, but um, uh, this uh, uh, implies that the interface is not a C1 in the, in, in the, in zero uh, capital T, uh, Closed, then the closed interval. It's open here, in zero. And also, our results can be extended uh, to um, the two phase uh, Stefan problem. In fact, the, in, the, in the paper, it's written for the two phase, and then I adapt to the talk in order to, to, um, to make easy to understand uh, the argument to the one phase uh, Stefan problem. So um, the same result holds with two um, distributed controls here uh, in this uh, two-phase Stefan problem. And, and for the Stefan, uh, two-phase Stefan problem, we have a negative result that you cannot uh, eliminate one of the distributed control because of the maximal principle. If there is no control here in the first equation, since the initial condition here is, is positive, so the solution at any time cannot be zero, okay? So uh, if you do not have a control here, you cannot, with a control act only on the equation for V, you cannot steer both solution uh, to zero, okay? And so uh, some reference here, and uh, thank you very much for your attention.